There's a scene in this movie where one of those kind of fake preachers talks about how once his congregation is sufficiently riled up, he can say literally anything, and they'll still hit him with the hallelujah, praise God. So we're just gonna... Was it easy for Daniel to face those lions in their den? Was it easy for Noah to build a boat and rescue God's creatures from the flood? God asked hard things of those men, but of you, he asks only one. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, bathe in the light of scary stories, and be saved. Welcome back everybody, I'm Jake the Scary Story Guy, and today we are kicking it back to 2010, the heyday of found footage horror and movie posters that looked like this. The Last Exorcism honestly just seemed like a hundred other possession movies that I've already seen, and the online scores aren't even that good, it has a 5.7 on IMDb, so I admit I never gave this a fair shake. But more recently I've heard some talk that we've actually got an underrated classic of the genre on our hands here, so I had to check it out for myself. And while I think the word classic might be taking things a bit far. This is a very flawed movie. I absolutely think it's worth the watch because of how differently it handles the subject matter than most other movies like this. So let's just dive right in. The Last Exorcism is a documentary style film that follows an evangelical preacher who sort of grew up a, a religious star in his in his small community, like a oh, local 10-year-old preaches sermon, even does an exorcism. And as an adult, he kept the exorcism shtick going for a while, just bullshitting people left and right, but he eventually comes to kind of feel guilty guilty about that and realize like, oh no, this is actually like, people can get hurt doing this, this can make bad situations worse. So the next letter he gets begging for an exorcism, he brings a camera crew along with them so he can show them all kind of behind the scenes how it's done and expose the whole exorcism business for the fraud that it is. But of course when he gets there, things aren't quite that simple. The subject of the exorcism is a teenage girl, her dad is super overprotective, total, you know, fanatic nutcase kind of guy. And so we get a gradual unraveling of like, okay, what's actually going on here? Is, is she faking it? Is she just mentally ill? Is this real? And all of this from the perspective of someone who doesn't believe in anything supernatural, but is pretending to. And the first thing to really opine on here is that this main guy, this preacher, he's an actor named Patrick Fabian. I'd never heard of him before, but he absolutely crushes this. He so perfectly captures that kind of like phony, over-the-top evangelical zeal that you get from like TV preachers, except more like a common folks appeal to it, like a tent preacher. But he's as equally able to pull off the kind of quiet, subdued, thoughtful, behind-the-scenes guy as he is the ranting and raving and exercising showman. Now, thanks to the success of The Exorcist 50 years ago, this whole genre has been dominated by Catholicism, Catholic exorcisms. It even talks about this in the movie. It's all very, you know, robes and ceremony and solemnity. There's a heavy emphasis on, like, expertise, right? Like, authority and training. Only we have the power to cast these things out. But here, the authority figure is just like a regular guy, just like the down-the-road preacher who just kind of shows up and treats the whole thing like it's one of his one of his sermons. He's just kind of winging it like, uh, all right, uh, let us pray to Jesus that he will cast this demon out. Be gone, devil. And the whole time he's just telling the camera behind the scenes that this thing is all about manipulation and the power of suggestion and getting people to think there's something actually going on with them. You can get them to act possessed even when they're not. But unfortunately, sometimes that creates a kind of frenzy in others that you can't always control, right? I mean, the, the father in this movie just gets progressively more fanatical as things go on because of all the, the crazy stuff that this preacher is telling him. So to me, this sort of naked depiction of religious manipulation was in some ways far creepier than any of the actual exorcism supernatural stuff that might be going on here. Which does bring me to a critique I have of this movie, and that it's just, it's really not scary at all. It certainly does not have anywhere near the vibe that is suggested by this poster. It reminded me of the exorcism of Emily Rose in that it's just kind of a, a drama. You know, like a character study, a uh, slow burn for most of it. A slow burn that's only 80 minutes long, mind you, so that's really a minimal amount of actual horror content that we get in this, despite what the marketing would lead you to believe. We're building a sense of dread, a sense of intrigue, but the payoffs are pretty few and far between. So the movie really ends up being carried by this main performance, and actually all the performances are very good, very believable as this, you know, kind of backwoods, gullible Louisiana family, uneducated, they're just gonna believe whatever shit this guy throws at 
them. But of course, there is definitely more going on than meets the eye here, so when everything hits the fan, it is at least pleasantly spooky. But the problem, and then maybe it's not actually a problem, is that by that point in the movie, you're more just like intrigued than scared. It set you up for interest rather than fright. Because throughout the movie, they do a good job of keeping things ambiguous. Like usually in movies like this, it's just like, oh yeah, you know, possessed, no question. Here, it's it's not that clear cut. Now, I do have one fairly major complaint, and it's the ending, specifically just the last five minutes. No spoilers, because I'm guessing you guys, a lot of you haven't seen this, or if you have, it's been a decade since you've seen it, but I wasn't a fan, needless to say. There's any number of ways they could have wrapped this up. In fact, it looked like they were kind of on their way to one of those ways that would have really matched the the unique tone and setup of this film. But then instead, they, they switch things up right at the last moment and kind of give you this stereotypical intro to horror writing ending that, in my view, cheapened everything that came before it. It's a really jarring shift, too. It just totally feels like it comes out of left field, not in a good way. The first 75 minutes is unique and thought-provoking, and then the final five minutes, it just turns into every, you know, found footage horror movie from this era, and I thought that was a shame. That being said, I did get a lot more enjoyment than I expected out of this film. I really thought this runtime was gonna drag, just like, ugh, I've seen this a hundred times before, but it held my attention very firmly through. Throughout. The performances are really believable, the found footage setup and, and concept works a lot better than it normally does, it clearly makes the most out of a very small budget. The ending did sour the taste a little bit for me, but I still have no qualms giving The Last Exorcism a very solid three stars out of five. Alright guys, as always, stick around for more spooky content coming soon. I'm actually going to the theater tonight to check out a new horror movie called Imaginary. It's almost certainly not going to be good, so go ahead and subscribe to this channel and maybe I'll save you some time and money next week. But in the meantime, thank you for watching this video, and here's hoping you survive to see the next one.